Hello and welcome. The, my name is Omar Radwan and I am in the ENGI 1331, Dr. Burleson's 830 morning class uh, in group 20. Uh, my project is focused on the chemical processes production of ammonia problem. Uh, and this is the video. In this video, I will discuss the background, uh, the equation, derivation of our project. Then I will guide you through the algorithm and code uh, logic. Then I will demonstrate our code's capabilities. And uh, finally, I will uh, follow through with our limitations and applications of our project, our code. Uh, so let's start off with our problem. Uh, assessing the problem, we have a chemical process uh, with fresh feed of a mo uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, and inert gas. The inert gas has no effect on the reaction. Uh, it's just simply there for the ride. Um, we have a cooler stream uh, after the reactor. Uh, we have a condenser which condenses the ammonia, 100% of the ammonia that leaves the reactor leaves from the stream. Then we have nitrogen, hydrogen, and the inert gas going up. Uh, those In this stream uh, we have a purge stream and a recycle stream. A percentage of it gets purged and percentage gets recycled goes back into the reactor. Now we want to start off by solving this problem at this stream. Uh, we're mostly going to focus on this stream and this is going to be our most important stream. Uh, this stream is a combination of recycle and fresh feed. Uh, so our task, uh, we have four different tasks in this problem. The first task is applying mass balances uh, to the system and four we have to find the costs of the system, uh, cooling and condensing of the system. Um, let's start off with task one, applying the mass balances. So like I said, this stream right here that enters the reactor is going to be the most important one. So we have three different inputs, user inputs. Um, we have YP, which is the percentage of uh, this stream that gets purged. 1 minus that is equal to the recycle stream, by the way. We have Xi, which is the percentage of um, the fraction of this of the feed stream that is inert gas. Uh, we can figure out a relationship for nitrogen and hydrogen based on the stoichiometric relationships, um, which comes out pretty nice uh, in this case. And we have FSP, which is how much of this stream gets converted uh, or reacted. Uh, from that, we can determine how much ammonia is produced. Uh, so, basically, we we started this stream and we figure out different relationships using FSP, YP, and XI uh, in order uh, to basically put every stream in in those variables. To f and then once we're finally finished, we come back here. We add the fresh feed uh, relationship plus the recycle relationship to get a definition of this. Uh, in regards to YP, FSP, and XI, uh, which will allow us to solve the system. So that's our background and equation derivation. Um, just a quick overview of it. Let's go to our logic behind this task and the code. So what we do is we have uh, the three inputs, YP, FSP, and XI, and then we output FOV, MP, and NR. Now FOV is ov the overall nitrogen conversion. Uh, MP is equal to the nitrogen produced from the reactor. NR is the overall stream entering the reactor. So the NR is that important stream I was discussing. MP is uh, the nitrogen produced, uh, sorry, the ammonia, that's the typo. That is the ammonia produced from the reactor, and uh, FOV is the overall nitrogen that was converted. Um, so task two, we have to graphically analyze the system. Uh, I'll show you in a bit how that works uh, in our code, but just to look at it, uh, this is the relationship between the ammonia produced versus the fractional conversion. So as the fractional conversion increases, y YP XI staying the same. Obviously, we have more ammonia being produced because you're converting more of the nitrogen and hydrogen to ammonia. Uh, on the other hand, we have YP and XI. Uh, YP is how much was purged. So the more that was purged, the more that was recycled. That's why we see uh, 
uh, that's why we see it decreasing, the amount of ammonia decreasing. Then uh, we have finally Xi as it decreases. Xi represents the fraction of uh, inert gas in the feed stream, which means the higher it is, means that there's less nitrogen hydrogen in the feed stream, which essentially means there's less ammonia being produced. Um, so that's for task three. Uh, it's basically, this is just a nice way of wrapping it up into one nice paragraph of what I just went through and explaining um, the graphs. So for the sake of time, let's move forward to task four. Uh, task four, we had to determine the utility cost, the cost to condense uh, the ammonia and cool down the gases in the system. Uh, we have the three, four inputs this time. Uh, YP, FSP, XI, which is the same as the first function. However, we have NN. Uh, NN is essentially the feed stream, the, t the sum of this feed stream. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we kind of just assumed it was given to us, it was assumed that it was one moles entering the feed stream. But we can actually, in this code, determine what the feed stream ourselves in kilomoles per hour. From that, by changing that, we have uh, we can determine different costs to cool the gases and condense ammonia, which makes this code pretty unique. So some things uh, in the limitations and applications of our code, I'll discuss those as I'm going through our algorithm. So this is uh, the ammonia uh, function, which is the first function I mentioned uh, in, in tackling task four. Again, we have FOV, MP, and NR. Um, and it gives the relationships. This is the nitrogen before the reactor, which is the relationship we get. From this uh, relationship right here, again, we put all the variables in terms of Xi, Yp, and Fsp. We can then determine nFed. Um, so we know FOV is nFed minus nPurge divided by nFed. Um, and <clears throat> And we know that NR is the hydrogen before the reactor, the inert gas before the reactor, and the nitrogen before the reactor. And finally, NP, which is the nitrogen produced from the reactor, is equal to 2 times FSP times NB reactor, which is um, what we have right here. Uh, so that's our first function. Now, uh, our code. Uh, when I run it, this is what it does. So I ask you to input YP from intervals of 0 point, from point 0 0.01 and 1 for YP. Uh, and we can try point 0.2 interval. We enter YP, point 0.2, FSP in specific interval, we enter point 0.5, and then XI 0 0.2. From that, outputs the FOV. Um, FOV, uh, the ammonia produced, and the amount of moles in the feed system. And just to have a better visual of the system, it also outputs the figure I just had earlier. So we can actually click on any key to continue. And what this does, this uh, outputs each graph one by one. Click enter again. This is if, this is YP versus ammonia produced, and then this is FSP versus ammonia produced, and then we can enter again, and then this is XI versus MP produced, and finally for t task three we can see um, the interpretation of the graph and the optimization of it, and finally we have the option to repeat. Um, if you want to repeat it, you're free to do so. It just does the same part. Now, I'm going to cancel this real quick just to show you the uh, limit or the potential of our code. When you run it, it actually takes in scalars um, and vectors. Now, the issue with when it comes down to when we put vectors is that... Um, uh, w the plotting part, and that's one of our limitations that I want to discuss. When we plot it, uh, what it does is, since we have to keep either FSP or XI or two out of the inputs 
a constant, it becomes too difficult for our code uh, to pinpoint which what are the constants or what need to be constant, um, and it will output hundreds and hundreds of plots. Uh, if you tens to hundreds of plots, if you put it in vector now what we did is we essentially made it to where um, you can it only output plots when you have a scalar value uh, in the running now the that's uh, our main limitation I don't think we have other limitations um, now what this does we do data validation as well if I put a negative one here um, 0.6 0 negative one uh, what it does outputs a warning and asks you to try again because uh, again there's a specific interval that we need these to be in there are fractions so they have to be between zero and one or zero point zero one to one um, or zero to point nine nine now that's for the first part of our algorithm I'm gonna cancel this I want to go to the second part which determines the cost. Uh, so this one, uh, we use a separate function again. We have an extra input, which is NN, and then we have C for the cost. Now, for NN, I went back in and I rearranged the nitrogen before the reactor and added in an in instead of just assuming it was one. So I had to change some stuff different than uh, the first function over here, as you can see. Uh, there's some slight differences in the um, derivation of the equations. Now when I run this one, uh, in the code it's doing all the conversions from megajoules and joules. We have different relationships. So again, just to run it for a safe one first and then we have 0.5 and then 0 0.02 and then we input the inlet flow rate which is an extra part let's say 5 let's say it's 5 and what this does uh, it outputs the cost to cool the gauss uh, and to in the reactor and the condense the ammonia uh, in amount of dollars uh, and it actually tells you the molar flate you, you chose. If you want to repeat it you can always repeat it. Now we also have data validation in this one just like in the other one. It gives outputs a warning um, for this one. Now last but not least um, getting this video is getting a little bit too long. Uh, just wanted to discuss the applications of this code. So this code can be used in many different ways. Mostly, um, it can be used to optimize the production of ammonia uh, in a similar system, or maybe not ammonia, maybe um, in other chemical processes. You can figure out different relationships, um, similar, and just change the numbers around a little bit. And you can use the same exact system to quickly determine the efficiency, predict the production of a certain chemical process. Uh, it allows you to tweak the system without actually changing it in real life, just seeing theoretical outcomes of changing something. Now, we determined the theoretical yield um, of this, and which was, if you go back to this graph, the theoretical yield is when you have... Uh, the fractional conversion at the maximum, which is 1, yp at the minimum, uh, which is uh, 0 0.01, uh, sorry, 0, yeah, it's 0 0.01, xi at the minimum, which is at 0. So with all of this, we can determine the theoretical yield, which uh, was outputted in task 3 as to be 0.5, um, so those are just some things and applications of this code. Uh, I felt like I went a little bit too fast just to cover everything. It's a long code that we went through. Um, my, our team worked really hard on it. I really uh, hope you were able to uh, gain a lot and 
learn a lot from this code. Thank you for listening. Um,